go back to about 7 o'clock this morning. Okay? When I walked in here, this, this slate, this space was empty. There was nothing on it. It was just a nice, beautiful, clean whiteboard. All right? The moment that I started putting something on it, right? The space, the ground, the field, the composition is neutral. In other words, this white space was neutral and inactive, right? There was nothing on it. If I came in here and I said, man, look at that board and tell me what it says, you'd be like, it don't say nothing. It's inactive, right? But the moment I start putting stuff in it, on it, around it, I have broken that neutral space by form and shape. Text is nothing but shapes, right? Characters of a letter. But y'all are all intelligent enough to know A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then when you put some of those shapes together, they form words. And then when you put some of them words together, they form sentences. So we take this space and make it active. Space is given meaning the instance a form appears within it. The moment I started adding to that space is when it started to create meaning for you. All right? Once you make the space active, the competition begins to attract the viewer. Right. Once you start adding or making that space active, new space is created surrounding each one of those forms. Right. Each element brought into the space adds complexity, but decreases the amount of little, little space Portion into a distinct shape that fits around the forms like a pieces of a puzzle. What is that shape? Wait, tell me. Huh? You don't know? Uh, anybody get, get guess? What does it say here? Puzzle. What does that shape look like? A puzzle piece. A puzzle piece! I Yay! So. You know, I, I know I'm a bad artist, but I ain't that bad. Alright, right, so basically, alright, so one, it looks like what? Don't let me, don't, don't let me make me say something about your mom now. <laughs> he said it looks like a deep point, says. Alright, alright, so get complexity, but decreases the literal amount of space forcing it into a distinct shape that is fits around the form. So in other words, once I created this shape, I am forcing this space to interact. Alright? Okay? But we need to understand once we start separating space, we can make it equal optically, all right? Or we can make it unbalanced optically, all right? What does that look like? I know I ain't that bad an artist now. What does that look like? Some eyeballs, right? Optically, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm not a good enough artist. I thought it could stand alone, so I had to word, add the word optically right there. Okay? All right. So once I start creating a form within space, I can separate the space and I can separate it by different ways and visual weight can make it equal or unequal. All right. Arranging form near and far. Right. If I was to use the spacing of the lettering, all right, and I squeeze that together, you would pronounce that as near. Hmm? Hmm? Near. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, look at that. And
and you and you and you wonder why I do that is because you need to understand that graphic communications is also about sound. All right, and we can convey a feeling of sound in a image. Nip. Bar. Okay. When does a design begin? As soon as what? It all design starts with a dot, doesn't it? It all starts with that one, that moment that you look at that space and you say, I'm gonna start here. Right? That's when all design starts. I'm gonna start here. Okay? And then once I add another element, I start creating a competition, right? As form enters space, the structure is changed to the space, right? How many spaces is within that form right there, that, that frame? There's one space, right? It's just the frame, right? There's nothing else there. How many spaces are there now? Two. Two. One, two. All right. We've changed it, right? Okay. There is one form, the line, but then now two spaces. All right. And with ch without changing the form, we're just adding another line, but we change the placement. We actually start changing the volume of the spaces, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And as we add more and more elements or change the direction or change the position or add additional elements, we begin to change the spatial relationships. With this ring ID wed. All right? It's a spatial relationship, right? Okay? Once you start adding something to your frame, it's like a marriage. It starts to happen. Whether you have one kid, two kids, or no kids, right? Okay? All right. It's a spatial relationship. All right? Understand that you can change the shapes and forms within your frame to add a distinctive look to it. All right? If you ever watch a Stanley Kubrick movie, everything is very symmetrical. In fact, it's so symmetrical that it almost baffles the mind sometimes. If you ever, and I don't care whether it was 2001 A Space Odyssey or a Full Metal Jacket or uh, The Shining, all right? Very symmetrical, his shots are very symmetrical. They're very geometric in shape. They don't feel natural. All right? You go to somebody like Quentin Tarantino, and his, his imagery can be very organic. All right? So it, it start, it, they deal with their space differently. Once you start adding elements, you can start to cluster things together to create relationships. All right, we've got this circle here, right? It's on a triangle. The circle sitting on that. If me, if this was a ball, which way would it be rolling? This way or this way? If it was a ball on a hill, all right, it'd be going down that way, right? Okay, all right. We know that these all have some kind of relationship because they're all the same size, right? But we've clustered it a little different. All right. We all know that this 
these little little circles and this one big circle are related because they're all circles, but we've clustered them different. You okay? All right. Once we start adding elements, we can align them to each other. In print media, alignment is very critical. All right. People like symmetrical looking designs in print. All right. In other words, this line's up here, this line's up here. This line's up here, these are lining up here. These line up here, this line's up here. It aligns, and then it probably would align to a frame. All right? Once you start adding elements, once you start adding things to your frame, you can overlap them. Either add meaning or take away meaning. Okay? Alright? Too many of you. I'm going to have one of you stand here, one of you stand here, and I'm going to stand in the back. Okay? Alright? We're going to overlap. You turn around and face that way. Alright? Standing right in front of her. Right there. In the video, can you see her? Just maybe just a little bit? Can you see me? Okay, because I'm big and fat and tall. Okay, all right. Can you see me? We're overlapping, right? Okay. Now, if I wanted to add emphasis to her, we are lined up still. And she's over here, right? We're adding emphasis to her because she's kind of out of our alignment. Okay. I can add more emphasis to her this way. Okay? All right? What do we do? What, what, what? Tell me what plane I'm on. Background. Background. She's in the... And he's in the middle, middle ground. I need, you, I need you to see that visually all the time. Especially when you're shooting video. What's in your background? What's in your foreground? What's in your middle ground? What are you adding emphasis to? If you wanted to de-emphasize her uniqueness, you can do it this way. Alright? This way, you slide back. Oh, Richard. <laughs> right? We're all on the same plane now, right? So I've taken away from her uniqueness of the design, right? Because she's no longer in the front or to the side. We're all on the same plane. Alright? Design is dimensions. All right? Okay? We got the same size now? Uh, there we go. The 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 it kind of works, knees. right? We're all, we're all lined along the top, right? Okay? All right? Thank y'all. All right? Layering. That's kind of dealing with, kind of overlapping, but layering is dealing with those three planes. How we deal with those, what, we, what plane do we emphasize, what plane do we take away? That makes sense? Sequencing, okay, all right. Um, come here, yeah, you, yeah, you. Sequence. Tall, or about short, tall, short, tall. How about white, black, white, black? <laughs> <laughs> what am I guess I'm not white and he's not black. <coughs> All right, so we good, right? Okay. Right. That, that's not <laughs> wrong. I'm not, not trying to be derogatory. Am I being derogatory? I mean, no. Okay. Alright. Okay. Uh, step forward. 
the sequence now goes forward, back, forward, back, right? Okay. Okay. All right. You stay there. What's the sequence now? Foreground, middle ground, background, middle ground. All right. What are we dealing with? All right. Thank y'all, gentlemen. Uh, symmetry and asymmetry. Now, I had actually planned on doing more of the PowerPoint today, and we'll get into a little bit more of this tomorrow, but my other whiteboard still got y'all's notes on there, and I was afraid to erase them because I know some of you didn't take the notes on the dimensions of the post-it book, all right? and I'd have to redo all that work. All right? But I'm going to tell you right now, I want my whiteboard back. All right? So I am going to be erasing that at the end of the day in case I need it for further instruction. All right? You can cut the video now.